Hello creative friends, it's Sue and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at some things that I have been working on, some things that I have finished, and some things that didn't go so well. I just want to start off by saying welcome to any new viewers. I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome back to anybody who is a continuing viewer. If you haven't subscribed yet, that would be amazing. It helps me grow and produce the content that I enjoy showing you guys. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I am going to start off before I even start talking, letting you guys know that I am suffering with a little bit of a virus or cold. So if I sound stuffy or nasally, if I sniff occasionally, please forgive me. I'm fighting it off, but it's still here. But I wanted to take the time to come on and do this video really quickly. So, we talked before about this cute little tea light moon that I received for Christmas. I also got a new mold the other day um, from Amazon. The mold is in the other room, but I'm going to show you what I made with it. It's a cute little corked bottle. And I thought this was a really cute mold. You don't have to worry about the top. I like the top I like the jars that I have that have the screw tops, but sometimes if the mold gets deformed a little bit or pushes out at the sides, the top won't screw on properly, especially if you use the mold a few times. This one I liked it because it's just a cute little cork that goes on the top. It's not super huge inside. You know, you could fit maybe some trinkets or little coins something that you want to put inside of it then it just has a really nice cork that just fits on top and i'm sure these kind of corks if you wanted to make more than one um you can get all over the place this particular mold i think came with five corks and what i did with this one is i did pour some slightly um colored resin in with some mica powder or yeah well it is mica powder but it's pearlex it's not the kind that i usually use this is the pearlex brand i got it from michael's years ago it's number 652 macro pearl i hope that the camera is focusing on that so i just put a tiny little scoop in there the mold obviously sits like this so you pour it in from the top here and it settled down around here and then as this was curing but not completely cured i mixed up some clear resin and poured that in but what i did prior to that was i took some little papers that i had ordered back at christmas time as well and fit them down inside the mold they are papers like this some more like scrapbooking papers but i did mod podge them first so essentially a mixture of glue and water to protect them so that they didn't get water stained by the resin so they have that dark spot those dark spots in them so i did cover them up with that first let it dry tucked them down into the mold and then just poured the resin in and honestly it's it's quite similar to the look i was going for so i really enjoyed this a lot the mold is super smooth super glassy feeling i'm really really happy with it so as always i will link down below to where i got the mold and if you want to see another uh, project making this type of mold in a different way leave me a comment let me know and i'll be happy to do that all right onward so this is the moon mold which is a tea light so the moon sits like this, obviously. And then in here, there's a silicone insert that prevents the resin from getting inside here. So I made one of these already, and it turned out really well. I was very happy with it. It was a tester. I was just using dumps of extra resin that I had from other projects to see how it would work. What happened to me as I was figuring out after the fact was that this little silicone piece right here it's not a permanent part of the mold 
So when I poured the resin in, it dislodged slightly and all the resin poured into the cavity here. There should be a hollow space here, which right now there is. But when I took it apart the last time, there was it. And when I looked at the mold, I could see that the silicone had twisted. So when I demolded the whole thing, the silicone was embedded inside the resin. So obviously not what you want. So I ended up taking the whole resin piece, the whole moon outside, broke it with a hammer and got the silicone out without any problem, which was fortunate. So now I'm in the process of making a second one. I've already let this resin cure. So this is clear resin that I've poured in with this glitter from Michaels. It's called Party Blend Snow Swirl. I did get it at Michaels, like I said. It's a very snowy looking color, but on a black background, it changes completely. And I should have already put up another video before this that shows how this looks on a black background. So check out that video if you're interested to see that. So what I'm getting ready to do right now is pour the rest of this and I'm going to make it like a night sky. So I'm going to do it a deep blue with some sparkles. So that's what I'm getting ready to do next. And then lastly, I have this beautiful alphabet mold that I just received not too long ago. I've been wanting letters that are slightly bigger than some of the ones I already have. And this one is gorgeous. So I've already poured some of the letters to test them out. I put some glitters in one, some little charms in another one, and then down here at the bottom, I poured a key and a heart. And I've only filled the molds about a third to a half full with the resin. I was very careful to get out as many bubbles as I could so that I wouldn't have any um, leftover bubbles making the, the final product kind of. Sorry guys, my camera quit. I ran out of storage, so I had to go and clean that up. So I'm not exactly sure where I left off. However, what I was trying to say is I did fill these up about halfway to two thirds, something like that. And now I want to pour the backing on the, these particular molds. So I'm going to mix up a small amount of resin to finish off my candle mold and then to also finish off the two letters and the key and the heart. Now one thing I will um, forewarn you about, although I love this mold so much, um, the one thing I did notice is I didn't pay it. I didn't pay. Oh my goodness. I didn't pay attention to the warning that they gave about the fact that these letters are all backwards. It's quite obvious that they're backwards. This is a backwards M. This is not my camera. This is truly how they are. If we flip it over, that's how the letters should look. So you can see my little embellishments. Well, I was working away, working away, and I did this really, really cool letter. I wish I could find it now. I'm not sure where I put it. Not very prepared tonight, as you can tell, but in any case, I did an M like this, only I did it with a beautiful side facing this way as it's sitting here. And of course, when I demolded it, the back side was the wrong side. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some resin off camera. I'm going to come back. We're going to div divvy it out. We're going to figure out what we're going to put on the back sides of these molds. And we're going to go from there. So stay tuned. All right, so the resin's all mixed up, and I've been playing around with what I'm going to do for each thing. So in this one little cup here, I have that macro pearl that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to mix this up in my cup. Get it really well incorporated. Then this is going to go into the heart and the key down here at the bottom. So I'll bring you in just a little closer here so you can see what I'm talking about. Once I move my hand, it'll focus. So I'm going to put this in here. And 
over here in my key. And if it's too high, I will take a little bit of it off. But I want to make sure that it's got enough resin in it. All right, so that one whoops, is done. And yeah, I think I've got too much in that one. Let me do this before I forget. It's going to take a little bit of this out. I don't want it to sink and leave a depression, but I also don't want it to overflow. So I am just going to come in here and scrape off the excess and then put some of this back in. All right. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm trying not to cough in your ear. All right, so I will tidy that up in just a minute, but now we're gonna come up here to the M. Now if you notice, this looks a little different than it did a few minutes ago. I've added a few more embellishments in there. So I've got some suns in there now and some different colored pieces of glass to give it a little bit of depth. And I'm gonna do another clear coat on here and I have extra clear resin right here so I'm just going to add this in <coughs> I'm so sorry guys I don't mean to be coughing in your ear I'm sorry I hit the camera All right, so I just poured that in. I'm just going to let that kind of sit and do its thing for a second. And then up here, we have the other letter, and that's the letter B. And for that one, I wanted to give that one some depth too. So I'm thinking I'm going to put some glitter in my resin. So again, I do have the leftover clear resin that I was just using. And I think I want to put, like I said, some glitter in there. So I have some blue glitter, this right here. And I know you're not going to be able to see this. So let me back you up just a little bit. We're just going to mix some. Yeah, I'll just put it in here. Why not? The only thing I'm concerned about with this, as I say all the time, is the fact that resin or glitter will sink. So I'm not going to put an awful lot of glitter in there. I just want a little bit to make it have some sparkle and depth. So I'm just taking my popsicle stick here and just putting a little touch over the top of the clear resin with the chunky glitter that's already in here. Okay. And again, I'll come in here and clean it up in a minute. Make sure I don't have any air bubbles. Do all of that good stuff. I will also come down to my key and my heart, make sure they're all, all okay. And I don't think I mentioned it, but I did buy a leveling board. So once I get everything all set up over at my leveling board, I'll show you that as well. So you guys can take a look at that. And as long as I'm thinking of it, I did bring over my mold that I bought from Amazon for that little uh, jar that I showed you with the cork cover. So this is the mold for that. It's nice and squishy. It's a really, really nice mold. It held up really well. I was very impressed with it. 
And then I told you I wanted to show you the M. So this is what the M looks like. It's not bad. I don't hate the color scheme. It's really kind of cool. And if you flip it over, this was the pretty side that I ended up with. And I really liked that. And I was experimenting with this gem because the nail art kit that I got had all of these gems that had a very, very deep table on them, that, that crystal point. And you're obviously not going to be able to put it on a nail. So you can see the point right there. You can't put it on a nail with that kind of a point unless you build up the acrylic a lot. So I thought, how am I going to do this in resin? Well, I put the resin in. This is UV resin. I put the resin in. I hardened it for like 10 seconds. So it was just barely starting to get hard. And I pushed the gem in. And then I put the rest of the resin over it. It overlapped just slightly over the crystal but not so much that you can't tell it's a crystal because what happens with uv resin or any resin is once you put a crystal like this in resin and you cover the whole thing up you can no longer see the facets it just eats it up and it just looks like a blob in there so i didn't want to lose the facets of that so i'm kind of sad that i screwed this up and put it on the wrong side but i can always get more so anyway onward with the show here so i've got these done for the moment and now I have some resin that I have just a little bit of silver mixed in with. And it's my Rolio silver powder, which is this, mixed in with my Rolio. I want to say this is probably, no, this is Azure. I'm going to probably need to put some more of the silver in here. I want it to be dark, but of course I don't want it to be black. On my camera, it's looking very deep blue. In reality here, this is more like a peacock. So I am going to put in just a little bit more of that silver. Just so it darkens it up ever so slightly. Because this is going in my little votive holder. So I want it to be a little bit deep, but not overpoweringly so, as far as the color is concerned anyway. So let's bring this over here, and I'm going to just pour that straight in. Get it right up to the top, and there we go. All right, so everything that I wanted to do tonight is complete. I'm going to set these over on my uh, leveling board, and I'll bring you over there to show the board and to show you how I have them set up in just a moment, so stay tuned. Okay, guys, here we are at the leveling station. So there is my moon. I use the rest of the resin to do a dump pour into that jar mold. So there's partially filled up there. I did do a mixture of the pearl and the glittery blue in an H. And here's my M, the B. I've taken out as many bubbles as I can. I actually did fill in the recesses with a paw print. And then there's our key and our heart. All right, and if you're curious, this is a J Diction right there, leveling board, and it's working really, really well. So far, so good. So I'll show you more about that after everything comes off of it. But for now, I'm going to go, and we'll be back with the unveiling of everything, so stay tuned. Hello, everyone. We're back. I'm in a slightly different setup right now. I'm trying to get the afternoon air, or <laughs> afternoon air, the afternoon light from the window in the hopes that it kind of helps show off some of my um, creations here for you guys. So we're going to start with a couple of things that I demolded earlier. I didn't wait to do these on my channel because there were little places that I wanted to finish. So this is the little heart that came out of here. And I did do a little tiny thing of 
resin in here for the keyhole. So you can see that there. It turned out fine. I have no problems with it. It's a cute little heart. And this is the key. I tried to get the resin in here, but it didn't. It's supposed to be a heart right there, but it doesn't look much like one. But the key turned out cute too. Whoops, holding it way off camera because I'm busy looking at it. So that's what the key turned out like. Nice and clear on the side. <clears throat> Same with the heart. Okay. So this is the candle mold that we talked about in my last video or in the beginning of this video excuse me so it turned out really nice it's all finished this is the blue on the bottom I still have some deburring to do down here I haven't finished that yet but it turned out really nice the only thing that I can complain about a little bit is right along here where I pulled the sec pulled poured the second layer there was a lot of bubble holes so I haven't decided if I'm just going to leave it like it is or if I'm going to try to sand that down I may just call it done and say to heck with it but it turned out really cute and I have a video of what it looks like when it's lit up so I'll put that at the very end of the video so that you guys can see it and I just drilled a small hole up there in the top, put a little eye screw in, and I had some heart charms, or heart, my gosh, my my words are not working today, my little star charm that has kind of a, a chrome color change to it that I thought went well with the color change of the glitter that I put in here. And I don't know if I said this earlier or not, but I held on to this resin and let it sit for a while before I poured this into the mold, this glitter part, because I didn't want the glitter to all sink. So I let the resin firm up a little bit to the point where it was looking like the glitter was going to stay wherever I mixed it. So that's how it turned out. So really cute. I'm very happy with it. The inside popped right out, so had no problems with it. And I got some little light up tea lights because obviously you can't really put a flame in there. It wouldn't work. So I do have these little um, battery operated tea lights that I'm going to put in there. So really cute. All right. And then, of course, I've been pouring leftover resin into my other jar mold. It's not completed yet. I kind of just did a mix of different blues and stuff, so it's going to kind of be a mishmash, but I'm looking forward to it. I think up here, which will eventually be the bottom of it, I think down here I may put some, um, some glitter, but I haven't decided yet, so more to come on that one. All right, so here's the remaining items. Oh, spillage on my board already. I'll have to get that off. So let's take a look at the H first, since that was kind of the one I just left for the end, because it was extra resin that I had. All right, and that's what the H looks like. Nice and smooth and shiny, very flat, which I, I really like. And the other side has a nice little domed effect, so if you wanted to, um, to look at either side, you could, and it looks pretty from both, both angles. All right, that's the H. Let's take a look at the B next. In the B, I just poured a little bit of um, plain resin on the back with some of the pearlescent glitter that I used in the uh, heart and the key. Got a little overpour here on the edge, so I'll have to clean that up. And on the back here, I didn't realize that poured over, but I'll have to clean that up as well. But there's the bee. Really cute. 
I really like how it turned out. It's really super sparkly. The back side looks really nice as well. All right. I didn't want to put anything too dark on the back because I was afraid it would hide the glitter. So I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I went with a clear or a more translucent blue. That's that one. I poured the cutest little paw print down here. I'm excited to see this one. Oh, he turned out really nice. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's fun because the sparkles actually kind of come through the little paw pads. But that turned out super cute. I like that. So very nice. This glitter, if you're curious, is the same that I used in the little candle votive thing. All right. And last but not least is the letter M. This was the one that I originally poured backwards. This one I poured correctly this time. And it turned out really pretty. So it's got some different layers in there. You can see. A little over pour on the back, so I'll have to clean that one up as well. I did pour them rather high to get a nice dome in the back. Speaking of domes, I wanted to point this out because I've heard this on um, another channel recently, and I thought I would share with you guys. And by the way, if you're curious, this is the level. You see the bubble floating around in there? That's what tells you your, um, your board is level. So I just thought I'd point that out. Um, it's not level right now because I'm sitting in a chair and I've got this on the out outer part of the chair. But anyway, what I was going to say, speaking of pouring domes, if you are trying to get a good dome on your pieces and you're having trouble with it, if you spray it with alcohol, it will cause the dome, the surface of the tent, the tension of the resin, that surface tension, it'll cause it to break and the resin will overflow. And I didn't know that until I heard that in another video recently that I had watched. I wish I could remember whose YouTube channel it was, but I cannot for the life of me. So if I do figure it out, I'll let you guys know. But that's the reason a lot of these things don't form that really nice uh, dome surface for me is because I always spray them with alcohol to get rid of those air pockets. This time I didn't, I just let them sit. And I came back after a little bit when the resin was starting to get a little bit more tacky and kind of just touched them with a the tip of, I have a, uh, a tool that's made more for polymer clay, but it has a rounded end on the end of it and it's metal. And I just went in and kind of swirled the bubbles around a little bit. The resin was tacky, but because it was still liquid, it just sank back down into the rest of the resin and made that nice dome. So I didn't have any bubbles, didn't have any issues with that. And it turned out really nice. So yeah, just thought I'd share that little tip in case you hadn't heard it before. I never thought of it, but I use alcohol all the time, as you guys know from previous videos. And if you're trying to get a good dome, don't do it. Try doing it without the alcohol and see how you see how it turns out for you. But anyway, that's it. I wanted to share the final pieces. I will put a clip of a couple of the um, close-up shots afterwards. If you want to stay tuned for that, feel welcome to do that. Take care, stay safe, happy, and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.